Hello, everybody. Um, just wanted to give you a quick rundown of uh, Virginia Physiographic Provinces. Um, this is all information that you can find in the William and Mary uh, Geology website, as well as Radford University's uh, geology websites that I've provided in the graphic organizer. Um, but I just wanted to give you a quick rundown and just draw your attention to some of the more important parts um, and show you some examples of the rocks and geology that we find um, in each of these provinces and how it kind of uh, all blends together uh, based on its history to what we see today. So in this presentation, I'm going to just show you some examples of rocks and resources uh, from each of the provinces. So uh, the rocks that we have here um, provide evidence of lots of different things. We have mountain building, we have um, rise and fall of sea level, we have uh, erosional and depositional deposits of weathered rock. Uh, we also find evidence of ancient seas. We find evidence of um, ancient swamps. So uh, looking at each one of these in particular allows us to kind of uh, infer the geologic history of Virginia and how it was made. So one of the big things, of course, that you'll need to know is you'll need to know these in order. Um, Appalachian Plateau, Valley and Ridge, Blue Ridge, Piedmont, and Coastal Plain. My best suggestion for that is come up with a mnemonic device. Um, see, A, V, B, P, C, all very bad people cry. Just something easy to try to remember those all together. So let's start with the Appalachian Plateau. Um, the Appalachian Plateau is a region that has a uh, pretty high elevation. Um, it comes right off of the Valley and Ridge and Blue Ridge physiographic provinces. But here, what we see is um, lots of horizontal layers of sedimentary rocks, um, high elevation. Um, we even see coal. Uh, so if we find coal, we know that it is indicative of some kind of swamp type environment hundreds of millions of years ago. Um, the, the way that I understand it is that during this time period when this material, the plant material is being laid down, a new um, protein had evolved in plants and allowed them to grow taller. Um, it, this protein provided structural stability, but also uh, flexibility. And so the problem was that the decomposers had not evolved a way to digest this protein. And so the plant material would pile up over time and not decompose. And so as it piled up, it compacted into coal layers that we see. Um, and so in the picture, you can see at the top, um, sandstone, again, sedimentary rock in the Appalachian Plateau, but up under there, you'll find uh, coal. So pretty large coal deposits. And this region actually extends all the way into New York. Um, and we find coal deposits all along there. So again, indicative of some type of uh, tropical swamp. We also find fossils in the sedimentary rock. Um, fossils you often find in sedimentary rock is primarily where we find them, um, but things like ferns and other uh, non-flowering plants. Then we get to Valley and Ridge. Now Valley and Ridge um, is a really interesting place. You'll know if you've ever been to uh, the Natural Chimneys or Shenandoah Valleys, that uh, its geologic history is really um, interesting. So for the Valley and Ridge, um, we have lots of sedimentary rock again, um, but it has been folded and faulted, which means that it's been compressed and in some cases even flipped over. Um, you'll find lots of sandstone again, but you'll also find limestone. Now limestone is indicative of some kind of shallow water environment. So uh, sea creatures live, they die, they fall to the bottom of the ocean floor, um, and uh, they pile up over time and compress into a rock like limestone. Because limestone is particularly susceptible to weathering, um, it effervesces. It, um, so that means that acids will react with it. Um, and the limestone will be slowly dissolved away, leaving things like um, sinkholes or these natural chimneys that you see, um, but also uh, caves like uh, the ray caverns. So, um, we call this karst topography when the, the, um, the geology, the area has lots of that limestone that's been dissolved away 
Um, and so we see some really interesting structures. Um, has caves um, and uh, really, really neat places to visit. You also again find um, fossils within the sedimentary rock um, and limestone formations. Um, and in this picture, you see these organisms called brachiopods um, that are a variety of marine invertebrates. So again, um, this area is really indicative of some place that was underwater, um, a shallow ocean hundreds of millions of years ago. Um, I have a couple of models uh, in the classroom when we get back there, I'll show you. But uh, you'll see this model of karst topography with the limestone formations uh, oops, and um, cave systems, um, stalactites, stalagmites. So as the water is dripping down, it leaves a little bit of mineral. And then when it hits the ground, it leaves a little bit more. Eventually, these stalactites and stalagmites will connect to form columns. Um, the other picture, you'll see these rolling hills of the valley and ridge, and you'll see these areas of depression, which are uh, can typically be sinkholes uh, formed by the dissolving of the limestone from groundwater. So next we have the Blue Ridge. Uh, now the Blue Ridge are a set of mountains um, that extend all the way again up into New York. Um, this is really indicative of some type of collisional event. Um, it is uh, lots of intrusive igneous rock, so it was formed from magma cooled very slow, things like granite, um, but has been compressed as this piece of continent collided with what will eventually be Virginia, um, were compressed and pushed up to form the Blue Ridge. Um, these are include the highest points in Virginia um, and also include some of our oldest fossils. Um, the, uh, the fossil that I show you there is actually not the fossil of the actual organism, but a trace fossil or just evidence that it was there. And these are uh, in uh, some quartz sandstone, uh, and it's a burrow hole. It's basically just a hole where we know that the organism was there, but we don't actually have the organism. But again, most of the geology of the Blue Ridge is gonna be igneous rock. Lots, the soil layer is going to be very thin there um, because of the high elevation. And of course, the soil is going to run off on both sides, from primarily to the east. Um, but again, we have lots of uh, those igneous rocks. Then we get to the Piedmont. Now, the Piedmont is a really neat place. If you, uh, I didn't grow up in the Piedmont, but I grew uh, after I graduated from college, I, I stayed in an area that was just red clay. And uh, that is the Piedmont region. Piedmont region is uh, a place that um, has mostly metamorphic type rocks uh, like slate and gneiss, which is metamorphosized form of granite, um, some schists and quartzite. So that quartzite is primarily what sandstone uh, metamorphosized. So this is an area that is really indicative of regional metamorphosism. So as that continental collision occurred that we talked about, the pressure from that created lots of these uh, metamorphic rocks. Um, it is really evident in what you see because of these weathered clays um, that of course get into your clothes, it's very hard to get out, but you find lots of metamorphic rocks here um, and materials that have been weathered away and uh, make up a large quantity of the soil there. So uh, in the picture, you'll see uh, kyanite, um, an aluminosilicate material, a silicate, um, used in production of bricks and mortars. There's also uranium deposits in Virginia that we don't currently mine, but there are some there. Again, lots of metamorphic rocks like slate um, and gneiss. And uh, again, it's a lot of evidence pointing to a continental collision and regional metamorphosism, metamorphosism over a very large scale. Finally, we get to the coastal plain. Now the coastal plain is the youngest region in Virginia. Um, it is terraced. So we have continually uh, getting flatter and flatter to the east as we move to the east. Um, but we also have lots of evidence of rise and fall of sea level over time. 
Um, we have lots of fossils here, but they're younger. Um, you'll see in this picture uh, lots of shark teeth that you may have even found yourself. Um, but again, this is the youngest rock region. Um, lots of sedimentary rock like um, uh, sandstone, but also some limestone, uh, some coquina, which is, uh, coquina is like, it really looks like seashells that have compacted together. Um, the state fossil for Virginia is also found in the coastal plain. Um, this is called Chesapecten jeffersonius. Um, that's pictured here and it is our state fossil. Um, here is an image of Coquina. This is uh, on the left hand side. You can see the dime there for uh, a reference for size, but uh, Coquina is basically seashells that have been compacted together, haven't been compressed fully into uh, a limestone form. But the coastal plain is going to be the youngest. It's also going to have uh, lots of sedimentary rocks, but also lots of evidence of sea level rise and fall and lots of uh, fossils from sea creatures. All right. So that's um, pretty much it. Um, so the, it's very straightforward. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. But again, the biggest things that I want you to understand about each province is the types of rocks and things that you find there, um, because that will tell us about the geologic history. Uh, just a quick review. I'll go back to the first slide. The Appalachian Plateau, we have uh, sedimentary rocks uh, like, um, like uh, sandstone, but <clears throat> excuse me, also large coal deposits indicative of a tropical swamp. Valley and Ridge, we have sedimentary rocks as well, but they've been folded and faulted over. Um, limestone deposits uh, that have been eaten away by groundwater, um, leaving behind karst topography, which include caves and sinkholes. Blue Ridge, uh, the oldest rocks in Virginia, uh, lots of igneous rocks, um, and of course they're mountains, so there was some kind of continental collision that caused that uplift. Uh, the Piedmont is going to be more metamorphic and um, uh, more metamorphic rocks, um, indicative of some kind of uh, heat and pressure of a large scale, so uh, con uh, excuse me, regional metamorphism, but again, lots of metamorphic rocks, um, including slate, gneiss, and even some uranium, uranium deposits. And then finally, the coastal plain, the youngest um, Ceteris landscape, uh, lots of sedimentary rocks, uh, fossils of sea creatures, um, and again, indicative of uh, rise and fall of sea level. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much. I thought I would have